Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel. We have decided to put together over the course of a summer a survival water bottle. And I've watched many YouTube channels, I've watched a bunch of Dave Canterbury and the Pathfinder School and a bunch of other things and I've found out through watching a bunch of videos and the personal items that I have around my home these are some of the items that you could use in a survival water bottle and I'm not saying that they're the best in the world I'm not saying that they're the worst in the world it's just these are the items that I have and these are the items in which I think everybody should have and when I get done with the video we'll do a wrap up and I'll show you how everything fits into this clean canteen uh, 40 ounce water bottle here and we'll uh, put it all in there and this nest nicely inside of there and then we'll show you how that all works so let's get started here so first and foremost is your, is your canteen of course and it's just a single wall layer it's not the vacuum insulated one and you can obviously use this to boil water I haven't yet because I haven't had the need yet but you can boil water and of course with the cap it's got a real nice ceiling cap and I put on two carabiners these ones here are capable of holding your body weight so say you do need a way to secure a hammock or you know repel from something you have something with you that you could obviously trust your life on because in any survival situation you want to be able to trust your life with whatever gear you have rather than cruddy gear you get from say dollar store and I wouldn't want to trust dollar store stuff anyways so that goes with that obviously just like that when we're done and then you have the GSI Outdoors cup I forget what size or ounce this one is I think this is like a 16 or 20 ounce cup but this nests great within the clean canteen water bottle fits perfectly the next thing is a cotton bandana enough said there's a million videos out there on it cotton bandana gotta have it life straw gotta have it enough said okay moving on to the next thing this I kinda came up with uh, with a couple ideas online and or things that I had laying around and I decided to use a plastic straw which is now banned in California by the way and I decided to wrap a bunch of Gorilla brand duct tape high visibility orange on there there's about I don't know six eight feet wrapped on here real nicely and then I put about 20 to 30 feet of fishing line next to it followed by some 3M electrical tape and then followed by a compass that's held on there and then more 3M electrical tape. Reason for the plastic straw is because now the compass does not interfere, nothing interferes with the compass when I need it to work and that is true north the way that it's pointing. So we know that the compass works and there's no metal on this stick at all. So therefore it's going to work without taking off or cutting the straw. So therefore you have your compass. You have fishing line if you need it, you have duct tape to repair stuff, and electrical tape. So that's kind of a four-in-one, not including the use of a straw. Next item is a flashlight. Just a good old Cree flashlight, or Cree brand LED flashlight. But, best thing about this is it takes a simple AA, you can use whatever brand you want, just AA battery. I like these because you can power check them you just put your fingers on them like that you can see your battery is completely full ready to use you let go it goes back like that and you just pop it in there just like that it does have a little o-ring around here but I would not call these waterproof I would like any electronic item I would keep them out of the weather but the best thing about it is you can zoom it in like that or zoom it out and then you can go strobe high low and then strobe and you can also zoom it in like that too so it works really good that way and then that way you can go back to high beam or high mode and then you can zoom it in if you really need to spotlight something 
and it works really great. And again, it uses one double A. So you could find it just about anywhere in America, any corner store, it works great. Then the best tool that I've owned for the last 15 years is of course Leatherman Wave. I currently have three of them and I have three of them for a reason because they last, they got a 25 year warranty on them and if you have any problems, fix, send it in to Leatherman, they'll fix it, no questions asked and they're a great tool. There's probably 10, 20,000 videos out there on Leatherman Waves. Anyway, so there's that tool. Next item on the list is a bunch of heavy duty aluminum foil. You can use this for cooking, you can use it for a multitude of uses, collection pot, whatever you want to use it for. And of course you got rear bands on there too. So you got another two in one. You don't have anything in the middle, but I can always put other stuff in there if I really truly needed to. Next item, these are two items to where I don't think people put in their kits, but I think they should be a necessity. If you're out in the woods, obviously, you have a wood saw. And I do know that the Leatherman Wave does have a wood saw, but I'd rather use this one because this one's disposable after you wear it out. The one on the Leatherman Wave, of course, is not. It obviously is screwed in and bolted in. So I'd rather use this one, and obviously if you're needing to cut metal or tin or whatever you have to cut through, you also have this one too, which obviously the Leatherman Wave does not. Plus, they're very thin, they don't take up any room at all, and to me, I can get them at my work for practically nothing. So I was able to snag some up and bring them home and add them to the kit. Another tool that I bought is this P51 can opener and it's by the US Shelby company and these guys make really great military can openers. They also have the smaller version but I wanted to get a little bit larger because everybody said that these work greater and you got more finger control as you're cutting the can like so. And I do realize again yes the Leatherman Wave does have it but it's the redundancy of what if that one breaks, I have another way to get a can open. Plus, it's just like these guys, they're really thin, they weigh practically nothing, and this one's all stainless. So it'll be around forever and ever and ever. The next item is going to be these wet ones. These will just be for your own personal hand sanitizer, you know, just to wipe your hands down, cleanliness, you know, if you need to wipe your face, whatever, pretty self-explanatory. Another personal item would be these um, trim brand um, uh, fingernail and toenail clippers. And these ones here I like because you can use both the toenail clipper there and then the fingernail clipper there. And what I like about them is, is that it's a two in one and a lot of people would sit there and say, oh, well, yeah, you know, if if you need it blah 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 well I found it it fits in there and it's a two-in-one and I'll take it so I put that in the kit as well and then also you can use whatever chapstick you want I prefer to use the medicated one myself and everybody has their own opinion but also you could also use this as a fire extender or tinder the classic one I believe I haven't tried the medicated one yet but we'll try that on another video so you have a way to keep your lips from being chapped and also fire starter. Going into fire starting now, you have a um, Charade brand fire steel and striker here. And I attached them with plenty of paracord so you can actually strike and get it out there. Plus I knotted them really good and then I super glued them so then the knots never come undone. So, and I yes I do have bigger ferro rods but because the kit is small, I don't feel the need to have a super large kit or a super large ferrule rod in there because this is again redundancy back to this, the Bic lighter. And this is just your standard everyday Bic lighter wrapped in some paracord so I have a little leash on it. And I don't consider this to be my survival paracord because I'll get to that in a minute. But attached to it is your signaling device which is a whistle and this one I bought on Amazon. I don't have any balls or anything in there, but it is extremely loud. And it works really well. 
it's super lightweight because it's out of plastic and I put a key ring on it just so I wouldn't lose it in here or it wouldn't fall out. So I do have that as redundancy. So going back to the paracord. Now we have paracord. You can use whatever flavor, whatever brand, whatever style fits you. You can use the Titan Survival stuff. This is here just for demonstration purposes. And for the love of God, please do not put this in a tight weave or a paracord bracelet and expect to get it off whenever your fingers are freezing off at 40 below. It does not work. Your fingers do not function very well at 40 below. So, I'll show you at the end wrap how I wrap it around the water bottle and it'll be quickly dispensed and then you don't have to try to unweave everything if you're in a situation and you have to try to unwrap all this while your fingers are freezing or you need it as quick deployment. So anyway, so there it is. There's all the tools and I call them tools because that's what they are. Tools to help you survive whatever situation you need longer and this is up in the Pacific Northwest. So other people sit there and say, okay, well, what about your everyday carry? Well, this is what I carry for my everyday. I use this tool more than any other tool that I've, besides the Leatherman Wave, but I use this because I have a billion and one razor blades I can get for my work for free. I've cut insulation, I've cut packaging, I've cut everything with this knife, and it works wonders. And it was eight, eight bucks on Amazon. So it's cheap, it's lightweight. That's what I carry on my everyday. So I'm not going to include this in the kit because this is part of my everyday. The other part of my everyday carry is this here. This is my Kershaw. It's a little dirty. I cut cut chicken with it earlier. This is my Kershaw barricade. And it also has a glass breaker in there on the butt cap and the cutters for seat belt or cordage or whatever on the back. And it has spring assist open, which you just flick with your finger, and it flips open like that. I do really like it because it's really lightweight. They have G10 scales on it. It works great, so that's part of my everyday carry as well. So if I'm looking at myself like, okay, I leave the house, I automatically have these two items in my pocket. So I don't need to add another knife to the batch because I already have two blades in here, one here, and one here. So I have enough knives for say for this whole kit without adding an extra knife. So before anybody leaves any comments saying, oh, you need a Rambo Bowie knife, not really because I use this maybe once a week versus I use this one every day. So it all goes back to the redundancy of how many times do you use it? How often are you gonna use it? And obviously up here in the Northwest, the weather changes every five minutes. So I have a duffel bag of clothing in my car because the weather changes so often. So I didn't want to include that because that's a whole nother video. But anyways, there we are. I will show a wrap up of how everything goes in these containers or in that water bottle. We have a clean canteen wrapped with about 25, 30 feet-ish, I didn't exactly measure it, of paracord. And then you have your GSI cups that nest inside by two carabiners. And we, of course, sped it up so you didn't have to endure the couple minutes of me putting it all together. But there it is. There's my realistic version of what a uh, survival water bottle should be. The paracord is on the outside ready to go, held on with some Gorilla brand duct tape. 
and it's ready to go at a moment's use. Yes, there's a couple knots I didn't get out, but it's ready to go. You don't have to try fishing it out from the inside, and it's ready to rock and roll at a moment's notice. That's the best thing I love about it. Or if you wanted to use your water bottle as a fishing reel and take that fishing line that I have on the inside and use that, you could always use the outside as your fishing reel and wrap it up. I've seen it on uh, Ultimate Survival Alaska. So that works great there. And that be the Survival 40 ounce clean canteen water bottle. And believe it or not, there's still a bunch of room inside for me to put stuff. I mean, I could still put Ziploc bags in there. I could still put other stuff. One thing about the live straw you've seen that I had to do is I had to remove the, the protective cap on the bottom and the cap on the top. So then it would fit in there and it would seal down. So, but there's still plenty of room in there for other stuff. Those are just the items that I thought were important enough to take up valuable real estate inside of it and still have room for this. So anyways, there it is. So hope you enjoyed. Please give it a like, uh, thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you and have a great day.